As a builder on site, I've always been fascinated with how they turn pine trees into sticks of timber that we build with and turn into houses. This lot here and most of the houses I build come from red stag timber up in Rotorua. The mill went through multiple owners and was put into receivership in the 2000s. In 2003, the current owners resurrected it to life and they are now the largest sawmill in the Southern Hemisphere. We wanted to know more, so we hit the factory floor to take you behind the scenes to find out what makes Red Stag Timber special. Coming up, we'll show you an inside look at the Red Stag operation. We'll talk to some of the key staff and find out why they love their job. And we'll break down what we believe are the key ingredients of Red Stag Timber's success. Let's break down how the mill works. It sits in a prime location just outside of Rotorua between two major forests, the Kayangarua and the Kinley Forest. All logs that are brought into the mill are taken over the Weybridge where they're weighed to get an initial volume coming in. From there, the logs are taken to the debarker and then they're scanned and stored to be fed through the mill. What's debarked there is probably a day. Off stock. Everything we can see with that bark on? Everything you can see this way of that uh, debark and middle shed. It's a huge amount that they process, and once they're debarked, they are fed into the sawmill to be cut into various sizes. Right at the start of the sawmill is a tandem quad sawmill. As far as we know, this is a one of a kind arrangement. No other sawmill in the world running this setup. This is what makes Red Stag unique and able to pump out the volume they are doing. Looking at it, I was so impressed about how fast the logs were moving down the line, how quickly they were taken from big logs to boards ready to be turned into four by two, eight by two, fence palings, fence posts. In real time, the computer is scanning each log as it comes in and working out not only the best way to cut it to reduce waste, but to optimize the amount of timber you're getting out of it and working around knots and imperfections. Once a log has been cut into timber on the line, they move on to the bin sorter and there's over a hundred different bins where they're held, stacked, filleted, ready to be dried before they're run through the rest of the mill. The timber is then kiln dried. From here, it's then sent through the planing mill. The speed at which six meter lengths of four by two were flying through the planer was mind-blowing. Faster than any builder I know can chuck it around site. The recently upgraded planer is so fast, it can process 1,200 meters per minute. The planer is able to process timber faster than any other part of their machinery. After the plane and the timber is run through a stress grader and then it's also visually graded along the line. Once the timber is stress graded, it is now ready for its final step, which is pressurized treatment. The timber is stacked and wrapped and that's how it ends up here on site for us ready to use. you kind of have this thought of what big industrial factories are like. And I think it was the opposite. Everyone from the first person that greeted us when we walked in the door to the boys and girls on the sawmill line were happy to see us and excited to talk about their part of the business. Everyone we talked to was friendly and approachable and genuinely seemed like they loved their job. 
The team at Red Stag were awesome and answered all our questions, even when we went out for lunch and dinner with the team. It was clear that they were crazy about timber, how to optimise for cutting, how to improve recycling, and that passion and that drive and that obsession is clearly what has made them a market leader in their industry. They are proud of the systems and processes they have in place and they are incredibly knowledgeable about their field. One of their staff members proudly showed us the training schedule on their wall and explained how they cross-train their staff in as many categories as possible and move them around the mill. When we asked them about specialist staff such as saw doctors, they took us up to show us the immaculate workshop and you could really get a sense of pride that the people working here loved what they did, really cared about their job and they were putting their best efforts in. You can see the pride and craftsmanship being put into sharpening these blades. There was a really strong sense of everyone belonging to the Red Stag family. We could then see that this led to a better product coming out of the mill and a better work environment. I was blown away by how they've created a team of so many people so happy to do their work. How their people are an important asset in the process. When we talked about things like why don't they run 24 seven and wouldn't that be a better way to increase productivity? They talked about the toll that takes on their people and their equipment and how they've learned that running a two shifts, four days a week operation leads to a better long-term sustainable output. I think it's like comparing it to running a marathon. They want to go the distance and they want to run a consistent pace really, really well. And that's evident in what we were seeing. The mill predominantly runs four days per week with two shifts per day. With yeah. Friday is overtime. So the issue with running a mill 24-7 is they are quite maintenance intensive and you do need to schedule downtime to do the work. As soon as you plan to cut every available wear of the week, you then you don't have any market. contingency. If something breaks down or you fall behind, then you're going to let customers down. The company's positive ethos and commitment to the community is evident in everything we looked at and the vibe at the mill is one of a passion for the work that they do. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video about timber. Did you know I also put out a video each week about the building process? Go ahead, click subscribe, and follow us build houses like this start to finish. You know you want to. While it was obvious that Red Stag saw their people as their most important asset, they were not afraid to spend their cold hard cash on reinvesting into the sawmill. In fact, since they've owned it, they've spent over $150 million upgrading it to become the powerhouse that it is today. A brief history, the current owners purchased the sawmill in 2003. Straight away they set to work with an extension, turning it from a twin mill to a quad mill. So that talks about the number of blades it has. This is a quad quad, so most mills will run something like a quad and often all four saws will be in the cut of the log. That means if you lose one saw by hitting a foreign object in the log, you have to shut down there and then to actually replace that saw. As here we've got a quad quad, so we're taking off four, five, six sideboards, so we can lose two saws during a three hour run. And they simply just back them out of the pattern and the production carries on for the next two hours. Yes. And then at the schedule break, the maintenance team will come in and change those saws. In 2006, they introduced a new state-of-the-art Scandinavian planer. And then in 2009, the treatment plant was launched. This provided the market with fully treated timber at optimum moisture content. In 2009, they installed the latest machine stress grading technology from North America. And then in 2013, they switched to automated optical grading. And this meant that they went from using the human eye for grading to using a computer. So this is the visual scanner. 
So this is scanning based on the paint colours, so that's how it gets the information from Metrigo and identifying all the defects in each board. Now the failure is generally driven by the defects, so you're not size. They also introduced a remanufacturing plant in 2013 that produces all the finger jointed timber we sometimes use in ceiling battens and a number of other things. Basically, again, optimizing waste coming out of the factory and using every piece of timber the best way possible. And they also upgraded to counter flow kiln drying and Red Stag was the first structural sawmill in New Zealand to switch to this technology. These improvements have put Red Stag in a league of their own in terms of quality, production, and customer satisfaction. And that's not an ad for Red Stag, that's me here saying it as a customer. I think pine timber had a bad rap in the 90s and 2000s. And we talked to Red Stag about this. They mentioned that it's all to do with the planting of the trees and the philosophies at the time. Forest is all about GF growth factor. It's all about growing the biggest, roundest tree as quick as possible. So that all these seedings were about GF factors and it started at five and went up to 25 and then we found the wood and it was terrible for structure. We had no guts to it. It's like that prune that just twisted and had no strength. So we had about 10 years of terrible wood that we were plowing 245 or something. So you got a real big bulky log, but you got a lot of twisting and a lot of wood that wasn't structurally strong. They've since planted their trees now to grow as tall as possible. And what that means is you're getting trees planted closer together. It's for getting good sized logs or smaller knots and better stiffness characteristics. From no pruning. No pruning in the high stocking. The high stocking is the bigger thing because then you're getting the smaller knots. Oh, yeah. so then they so, get to fight the group. Yeah, right? exactly. So then they go straighter and then the branches are smaller and they're focusing on growing mm -hmm. out rather than out. Yeah, true. So that's a huge change. Yeah, yeah. So the structural timber is improving all the time. Not only is Red Stag involved in what they're doing in their timber mill, but they're really passionate about what's happening in the forest and how they're planting the trees and it encompasses the full process. They also talked about how in the 80s and 90s we brought the average age of the trees down and we were trying to chop them down faster as an economic decision. But what happened as we went through this era of pretty average timber, going through the mill and going to site and so I kind of did my apprenticeship right at the end of that era and I believe that the timber quality we're working with now is better than what it was in the early 2000s, late 1990s. For me, it was really cool to see that, you know, these decisions that were made 30, 40, 50 years ago that have an impact in the timber we've been using over the last 20 years. It was really inspiring for me as a builder and a businessman to walk around their factory and hear about their future plans for what they want to invest in next. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. They're not just trying to scrape by, they're not just trying to run it really lean and suck as much money out of it. They're really, really keen and passionate about investing in this business for the long term. I came home and I thought about how can I do that in my business and how can I make better decisions. You know, it really challenged me to think about it's hard in the short term to spend more than you need to, but how they're upgrading their plant and equipment, not just to service their needs for today, but to service it for the long term, thinking about where their business is going and getting the absolute best equipment they can. And obviously everyone's still got a budget and they've still got to make money in their business, but they're making really smart long-term decisions. We also got to go and see their recent CLT factory. So not only are they optimizing cutting 4x2 and 8x2, they're now looking at how they can do cross-laminated timber and seeing that as a way of the future in the timber market. So I've got to give a huge shout out to ITM. This video wouldn't have happened without them. Red Stag supplies ITM, ITM supplies me, and it means we can build houses like this. Cheers, ITM. One of the cool things about working with timber, especially pine timber, is that it's already a renewable resource. It's planted purposely to be grown over a series of 30 years to be turned into 
framing timber. And the forests that Red Stag are milling are already on their third generation. And they're learning each time around how to plant better and better to optimize the amount of timber they're getting and the strength of the timber. So Red Stag is right next door to the two largest forests in New Zealand. So the transport from the forest to the site are kept to a minimum, which obviously keeps emissions down and we're closest to the largest export port in New Zealand where uh, a good percentage of our product has to go. So that keeps our emissions down. Obviously the wood encapsulates carbon in the building, so far outperforms concrete and steel. Not only is Red Stag investing in their forests and their plant and equipment, but they've also spent a lot of time and a lot of money on an energy centre that means that instead of being a net power consumer, they're a net power producer. They take all of the sawdust and bark and offcuts from their mill and run it through a bunch of boilers and generators on site to not only produce enough power to run the entire site, but to actually give power back to the grid. Number three boiler, smallest boiler, this is producing about 13 tonnes per hour of steam. So this boiler burns uh, green sawdust, dry shavings and dry hog fuel. So processes about 20% of the waste from the site through this boiler to make steam for the turbines to create power for the site and for steam to go to the kilns. And not only that, the ash gets taken away and used in uh, local gardens for a fertilizer. There's an excess demand for the ash coming out of the fires that they can't keep up with. How crazy is that? So by putting our ash and carbon on the market gardens in Pukekohe, they get better growth rates. Crazy, and so you've gone full circle. Correct. Yep. Not only are they investing in their people and their technology, but they're also looking at how they can optimize the environmental impact and reduce that and improve the circular economy. We are now starting to focus on our New Zealand market and removing wrap off our products. So a number of our large frame and trust plants are actually starting to get product without the plastic wrap on it. So that's something we hope to grow over the next few years. Not only are they trying to be energy efficient, but they're also continually looking for ways to reduce their waste or reuse their waste. So they've invested heavily in their remanufacturing plant, but they've gone one step further and they've created their own cross laminated timber plant. And in their remanufacturing plant, they'll make timber that then gets sent up to the CLT factory and gets used to make massive floors or stairwells, or they've invested in the world's largest timber CNC machine. It seems to be a continual theme here. When they decide to do something, they want to do it really, really well. Red Stag has become recognised as world leaders in energy efficiency and conservation in New Zealand. That's a pretty big achievement for a big industrial sawmill to be recognized as someone who is making massive steps in the right direction. That's a business that we should aspire to follow behind. <laughs>